What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite, I'm Timo, and we are back for another episode review of Love After Lockup. This is season two, episode 33, Love the Way You Lie. Mm. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think about this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, tonight's episode... <laughs> It was all right. Y'all already know this whole new cast of Love After Lockup, they all batshit crazy. They all don't, none of these couples really seem like they belong together. They all need to break and split up. Everybody kind of everybody. It's just too damn much. But hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. So we're going to start this thing off with Vincent and Amber. Now, it's the next morning. You know what I'm saying? They done shut Magic City down. She had scruples and muck all up in her face. You know, she had a good ass time. She says she got too drunk. She took a ride share back to Vince's Airbnb and she face planted in his guest room in the bed. She slept in her clothes, right? So it's the next morning. They both hung over. Now she wants to now talk to Vincent about all these red flags and stuff that she's seeing that just don't seem like it's right, right? So he gets up, he makes them coffee. They're sitting back. Here, let me turn this thing on phone. My bad, y'all. Hold on, hold on. Otherwise, it's gonna keep going off. Like Kevin Gates around this bitch. I got two phones. What would the blue? What the dude? I already gonna turn it off. But anyways, so she wants to talk to him about all these red flags that's been going on that she's seeing going off, right? So she like, look here. So. You asked me to marry you a month and a half after meeting me. I didn't know your real name until after you asked me to marry you. You said we had all these things that would be going on and would be happening while I was locked up. And now that I'm out, you seem like a completely different guy. Like, what's going on? Like, tell me what's good. Like, why did you ask me to marry you? And he had a valid question. If you felt like I was conning you, you felt like something right. Why the hell you say yes? Her reasoning was when you locked up, everything is so negative there. So he seemed like he was something positive. He seemed like he was goal-oriented. He seemed like he would just be the man of her dreams. But now that they out and about, it's just too many red flags, right? And a lot of this, I feel like, is coming from her home, girls, coming from all these outside influences or whatever, right? Because let's keep it real. Boo-boo, you conning him just as much as he is conning you. Let's keep it 100. Everybody know you ain't into beef like that. You like tacos. We all know that. And baby, last night in Magic City made it even more apparent that you like that monkey. You don't like what Vince got no doggone way. What I feel like is happening is she don't like that he pulling a her on her ass. She like, look here. If anybody finna be conning anybody around this mofo, it's finna be me conning your ass. I don't appreciate you trying to con me when I'm trying to con you. You know what I'm saying? So what's really good? What you trying to get out of this? Uh, a, a what? You know what I'm saying? Because quite honestly, the only thing I see him being able to get out of this is like he said when he adopted puppy, he gets a little $250 a month after that. But you got more to gain than he does. That's what I'm just saying. You steady coming at him about him coming. Now, trust me, I ain't on his side. I ain't on that one of y'all's side because both of y'all kind of the hell out of each other. What I'm saying is, it just sound like you getting pissed off at him because he pulling a you on you and you don't appreciate that. That's all I'm saying about that. But he's just like, look here, I thought we had a connection. I thought something would be good between me and you. But if you feeling some kind of way, you know what I'm saying? You need to let me know. So, y'all... I still need to know where is Puppy and when is Puppy getting out. Because as soon as Puppy get out, that's when we're going to get the truth about what Amber's really feeling or where she really want to be. But I can guarantee you, once Puppy get out, she ain't going to see Vincent no more. Because she going to be then dipped on Vincent's goddamn ass. That's just what I think. And I feel like now that she's out, she got a little feet up under her. You know what I'm saying? She, she, she trying to move around. You and Vincent is conning each other. Y'all ain't fooling no damn body. Girl, girl, bye. Tony and Angela. Y'all, Angela done went to the police station. 
She done checked on Tony. You know, he done got his ass back locked up. She said she done had a long talk with him. He really didn't want to hear what she was saying, but he ain't had no doggone choice. Now, he claims that he didn't cheat on her. He is dedicated to Angela. He loves her. He only wants to be with her, right? Now, the police done gave Angela all of his belongings. She dead set on finding the phone that she bought him once he got released. So, girl, she goes through, finds the phone, immediately charges that bitch up, goes looking through it, finds out that he's been texting some homegirl named Michelle, but he has her saved in his phone as Michael. Nigga, come on now. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? She sees a text message exchanged between Michelle and Tony where he's basically saying he don't know what to do. He fell for her hard. He fell in love with her so fast that he's basically begging her to be with him. But it gets to a point to where she's not even responding back to him. She's just ignoring his ass. Now, Angela pissed. She going through this phone like, uh -huh, that's what he gets. The motherfucker ain't even answering his ass back. Asshole. Are she pissed? She's pissed. Now she's saying, of course, he's begging and pleading with her. Please don't leave me. I love you. I only want you. I only want to be with you. Once Angela sees that he got a whole nother relationship that he's been holding, and it wasn't Amy. You don't win charge La Mama up, and it wasn't even her. You're lucky she didn't cut your big ass for that, because she could have I'd have cut the hell out of you. Especially you run up on the wrong female on the right damn day, and I ain't even do nothing with this old scraggly motherfucking girl. by. You could have got your ass cut for that. In Texas, you got your ass cut for that. But it wasn't even Amy. It was some whole nother chick named Michelle. But she's just gloating and laughing in the fact that you chasing after this bitch. This bitch don't even want you. But here it is. You trying to play me the whole doggone time, girl. She got so pissed off. She just kicked his stuff, left his stuff right there on the concrete outside the doggone police station and pulled off. I don't blame you. I'd have done the same doggone thing. Take whatever valuable shit you can and leave the rest of it out there. He won't play you. You go ahead and take just what the hell it is that you need, okay? So they end up talking with Tony. Tony says basically he knows that he'll be able to talk Angela down from the ledge because basically if she leaves him, he's pretty much screwed because he depends on her for everything. He knows he got a good thing with Angela, but now that you locked up, you want to come running back to her? But y'all, something tells me she not done with him. She can talk all this shit she want to. She ain't done with him. And I truly believe, had he put the D on her, baby, she already be in there putting money on his books if she ain't already. Now, Angela, you don't seem like you no dumb girl. You seem like you smart. You got some good, good goodness on your head. Don't fall back into that, baby. Don't do it. Don't do it, y'all. I'm hoping Angela keeps steadfast and she don't go back. But, y'all, I got a feeling she ain't done with him. Mm, she ain't done with him. Glorietta and Alex, y'all, they are, <laughs> I, you know what, out of all of them, this is my favorite little hot mess ass couple right here. Y'all, so he finally taken her out to her little romantical dinner that she wanted, because you know, she didn't get to go the night before, because he just wanted some push, she wanted the D, so she was okay with that, right? So now they're going out to their little romantical dinner, whatever, right? Now... They get to talking. She brings up the whole thing that her mother had said about, you know, if she doesn't convert, convert to being Muslim, would he convert? How would he feel if, the, if they have kids? Would the kids grow up in a Catholic home or in a Muslim home? Yada, yada, yada. Now, she's telling him that if they do have kids, that she wants the kids to be Muslim. He's like, and you know, she's asking, would you consider converting back to being Catholic? He's like, no, you know, maybe I would talk to you, maybe see about you converting to the nation of Islam. Now, she's not with that. She started to get real disrespectful. She was like, we're not in Israel or Arabia or wherever the hell. Now, I'm glad he checked her ass. If you don't know what the religion is, shut the hell up about it and respect that now whether your religion is something i agree on or not i would never disrespect nobody's religion like that and she better hope goddamn social media don't come after her ass for that she have every goddamn nation of islam circle after her ass after that because she was being very disrespectful with it but 
he was like, look here, I don't want to talk about that. She wants to talk about the wedding vows and when they're going to get married. Like, he, she ended up showing him, like, the little scrapbook that she put together. You know that old crazy-ass, stalker-ass scrapbook that she put together of the wedding? Yeah. She ended up showing that to him. He caught, you know, he was looking at that like he was creepy. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, the girl, what the hell? But, you know, he was just playing along with it. You know, he was like, look here, I don't want to talk about none of that right now. I just want to enjoy me a good ass meal and then we can get back to all of that later. You know what I'm saying? Later on, they end up going to a jewelry store and he actually, it was one of his jewel, jewelers that when he was out there selling big dope and all of that, when he was swinging and banging with the chains and all that, he went to see his jeweler and he actually does buy her a nice ass engagement ring right there in the jewelry shop. He proposes to her. She starts getting extra dramatical and all of that. But you know what I'm saying? She happy, I'm happy, I'm happy for them. But look here, um, Alexander, you gonna have to let this girl know about Angelina, your little ex that you got going on. I'm proud of you for following, you know, following through what you said she was gonna do, you know, giving this girl her little engagement ring and all of that. But you still got another whole nother female that you done caught up that you ready to go see. Now... Glorietta already gave you little hints at dinner that she's fucking crazy. Because she sat there and said, I will find you and let you know that bitch is crazy. Don't play with her like that. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. But he did propose to her. We're going to see what's going to happen with that whole little situation. Because, um, ooh, I, I don't see that ending well. Honestly, I don't see him marrying her. That's just my opinion because I feel like he conned her ass too. But, you know what I'm saying? We're we going to see what's going to happen with that. You know what I'm saying? He said he love her. He really want to be with her. He bought her ass a ring. So, he said he had some money saved up. His mama saved some money up. So, John, he went and bought her ring. He love her, child. Oh, and I forgot to say, after he gave her the ring, then she was okay with the kids being raised Muslim. That's all it took was a couple of carrots for you to be like, okay. She said she's ready to have a bunch of little Muslim babies for him. Girl, you sound... You sound dumb. But, you know what I'm saying? Love is love. <laughs> Cheryl and Josh, y'all, thank God she done went and got her some damn pants from the Target or the Walmart or something. Because he wasn't going to hear the end of that. Because you remember she done went and got her ass in the swamp water looking for some damn stolen money from six, seven years ago. Some shit like that, child. So she done got her some pants. They on their way to the family reunion. She's still afraid that the family is not going to welcome her. They're not going to think she's perfect and woof de woo They finally get there. Y'all, the family is welcoming her. They're telling her hello, giving her a hug, introducing her. Like, he's excited to introduce her to his family. Like, hey, you want to meet my girl? This is my girl, Cheryl. Like, he's happy. She's there. Hey, how are you? Hi. She came in with an attitude. So she can't be mad at anybody that was there that kind of was standoffish with her because she came in with a damn attitude, right? Now, you know, she already nervous about being there because his mama supposed to be there. Where's my damn fan at? There we go. Mama supposed to be there, and you already know her mama got an issue, and it all stems from the boyfriend, Kenny, because you remember back when he was locked up, Cheryl must have came down there at a point in time. Long story short, Cheryl bought the boyfriend a beer. Mama said boyfriend couldn't have a beer. She went and got one anyway. Mama pissed thinking that she was trying to mess around with the boyfriend, right? Mama arrives with the boyfriend and shit just got tense after that. Mama sitting to the side gossiping with one of her family members that a guy family member like, who's that, Shirley? Shirlene, what's her name? And her mama's like, Cheryl, but I don't like that bitch. I don't even want him to be with her. I can't stand her little skinny ass. And the mama, like, the mama friend, a uh, family friend was like, oh, girl, stop. She's like, I'm like that bitch. Mama goes and pulls Josh to the side. Was like, look here, just listen to me one more time. While I got you, I don't like her ass, and I don't think you need to be with her ass. I'm just telling you. Josh was basically ignoring her. He like, look here, mama, we here now. Let's just have a good time. Like, let's sit back and let's kick it, right? Now, when the mama and the boyfriend gets there, Cheryl is sitting down talking with some kids or whatever, minding her own damn business. The boyfriend comes and sits in a chair right next to her. You could have got that damn chair and went and sat somewhere else, but you went and sat on the side of her. I feel like he did that shit on purpose because he already know that mama got a problem with her. So he was probably being petty like, mm -hmm, I'm finna piss his bitch off. I'm finna go sit right next to her. <laughs> little asshole. And mama even looked up like, now what in the good hell is going 
I know he didn't go sit his monkey ass over there by that heifer. She ended up getting up and she walked away. She was like, uh-uh, I don't want none of these problems. Not to goddamn day. So mama ends up bringing out a cake for him. You know, it was like, you know, welcome home cake or whatever. She's, you know, like everybody's celebrating. She, next thing you know, she gets up. She's like, all right, well, I'm going to get this tire for the car. My car need a new tire. He's like, okay, well, what you want me to do? Let's go. We need to go get a new tire. And he like, right now? Like, we finna cut the cake. I'm still here kicking it with my folk. I ain't seen in the six years. Like, you ready to go now? She's like, uh, yeah, we don't get a new tire. She's up there and sad. Like, my tire is fucked up. We need a new tire. Like, he was like, look, girl. Now, look. If it was me, I'd be like, but you go get that damn tire. I will be here when I get back. Mind you, he still got a curfew. He got to be in by a certain time. He just get there in enough time to kick it. Ain't even got no cake. She, what it was is she was just ready to go. She was annoyed by the mama. She was annoyed by the mama sitting over there talking shit about her. So she was ready to go. He wasn't ready to go. But because he didn't want to cause no scene with her, he ends up leaving with her. Y'all. He act like he in an abusive relationship or something. Like, she gonna beat his ass if he don't leave with her or something. They get in the car. They leaving. The whole time, like, they arguing. He's like, you know, sometimes I'm miserable with you. Sometimes I love you. And she like, really? You miserable with me? But there was times that I had to go without to be there with you. And to make sure you had what you needed when you was locked up. And I sacrificed everything for you. They was just getting into it and shit. And I was like, okay, what is... What is the problem? Like, oh, Lord. He finally told her, like, look here. I love you, but I just don't know what's going on with me and you. I don't know if this shit gonna work. She was like, so what you trying to say? You don't want to be together? He was like, yes, no, maybe so. Hell, I don't know. What I know is that you bad shit crazy, and I know I can't do this with your ass no more. That's what the hell I know. So, y'all ain't no telling where their relationship gonna go, quite honestly. I don't see them making it either. Because I feel like, like he even said, he feels like he has to be with her out of obligation because she was there for him when he was locked up. But look here. Y'all shit too volatile. Y'all need to go ahead and give up the ghost, turn it loose, uh, or uh, whatever. Because, baby, that relationship right there ain't going to work. I don't see it working. If for nothing else, she don't get along with his mama. He a mama's boy. So, y'all, I don't know. Girl, moving right along from them. Lacey and Shane. <laughs> it's the morning after. They stayed up all night goosing. They laying in the, bl in the bed all blissful and all of that. Lacey's like, I love y'all. I don't want you to leave. I just switched this down and say, I love y'all. <laughs> hate the way she say you. Y-E-W. She says, y'all. She don't say you, y'all. I love y'all. So, y'all, let me just get to the point of this. So, she doesn't tell daddy that Shane is at the house. But she tells Shane that dad is on his way and I want you to meet him and my kids. Now, y'all, I felt that was completely inappropriate for her to do that. Like, you've only known this nigga a few months and you finna bring him around your kids like that? Now, she tells him, like, look here, you know, I'm Italian. My dad is Italian. He's like, oh, great. Italian's my favorite food. Girl, right then and there, you should have like, you know what? I don't think this is a good idea. Maybe you should meet my daddy because what you said was just stupid. Maybe you should meet my daddy. But... Daddy come through the door with the kids. Oh, but back it up. She tells Shane that it's a possibility that Marlo might be John's kid. Now, his thing is he's tired of talking about John. You didn't tell me all of that. Every day he's sitting, seeming to find out more and more that Lacey ain't telling his ass. Boy, that's because you should have got to know this trick in a first doggone place. So he's like, you know what? I'm sick of this dude. I'm tired of hearing about this dude. I just want it to be all about me and you. So daddy comes home with all the kids. Daddy's just as shocked as hell to see Shane. He's like, oh, hey, are you? You must be such a such and you must be Marlo, daddy. Like, who the hell is you? She's like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, dad. This is Shane. He's like, hey, how you doing? I'm Shane. They're like, okay. Now, who the hell is you? How the hell you get here? And how the hell do we know you? Shane put it all out there. <laughs> oh, well, my name is Shane. Uh, I met um, Lacey on a prison website. We exchanged phone numbers. We got to know each other, and uh, she picked me up for prison. I came here last night. I spent the night, and here we are, and I'm meeting you now. How you doing, Daddy? Daddy was looking like, Lacey, what the fuck is going on? Who is this? First thing Daddy said is, what about John? Lacey looking like Daddy, for real, you went there? 
You said this shit right in front of this nigga like this? Okay. All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So they go to sit down and talk. They're like, look here. Now, last month it was all about John. Now it's all about Shane. What the hell going on around here? Boy, how old is you? He say, I'm 21. Daddy said, baby, he's a baby. He still got Similac on his breath. You ready to get out here and be somebody's stepdaddy? How you know she ain't gonna cheat on you? Well, he claims that he has no reason to think that she would cheat on him. He's dedicated to her. He knows that she's dedicated to him. And um, that's just what it is. Daddy's like, okay, so what about John? What's gonna happen when John get out? Ain't he paroled to live here? Shane said he's just gonna have to find somewhere else to stay. Daddy was like, <laughs> does he know that? Because I don't think you know that motherfucker crazy. That's the laugh that daddy gave when daddy was like, <laughs> does he know that? Oh, that's that look. That told me all I needed to know right there. John is crazy. He going to kill you with her when he gets out. So you need to be careful about that. That's all I'm saying. That You know, daddy trying to help your ass out around here. Daddy trying to help you so you don't die around this bitch. You know what I'm saying? But he says he loves her. Um... Daddy like, uh, so what about the ring? Don't you still have John's ring? Shane is like, oh, well, I didn't know nothing about that. He, she's like, yeah, I got it, but I'm not wearing it. Shane, I didn't know nothing about that. Well, damn, you didn't tell me that. Shane even says, I'm finding out things more and more about Lacey each time. Boy, that should tell you right there. Slow your motherfucking road. You don't know nothing about this girl. And then not only that, daddy lets you know without knowing. He lets you subtly know. John is crazy. He gonna kill you. And he gonna kill Lacey too. I'm just saying. Listen to the hints that daddy trying to give to your ass, okay? But y'all, the episode ended from there. It wasn't a whole lot that went on with them, y'all. This season of folks is boring. I'm sorry. Gaudian and Andrea, they just, you know what I'm saying? Even though her rap sheet is a mile long too, we ain't heard nothing from them no more. We ain't heard nothing from Lizzie and Daniel this episode. I think they still trying to work shit out that's going on with them. But y'all, if it was anything that I missed in this episode, y'all already know. Put it down below and let your auntie know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. what's up y'all do me a favor and share the video please make sure to subscribe to my channel let me know what you think and um hit that notification button so you will be up to date when i upload my latest videos i have